So, the electrical system. I haven't done a video on the electrical system. Mostly because I'm afraid of doing one on the electrical system. I'm not an electrician. I'm only a mechanic by trade, but that was 35 years ago. So on the modern vehicle, pretty much useless, apart from brakes and exhaust. That said, I do have some understanding how the electrical system works. And on my canopy before this one, I actually did the whole electrical system myself and it worked a treat. With a bit of research, it's, it's reasonably easy to do. The electrical system on this I bought from new um, with the camper and it's 100% energy drive from start to finish. So that's what this video is about. We'll start here at the engine bay. So as you know, smart alternators today um, will want to charge or should want to charge your starting battery first. That's the priority. And to do that, you need a regulator. Regulator for mine is just here, so the power that goes through to the back battery for charging goes through a regulator, and that's the regulator here. Um, initially, didn't have one when it was installed. We we're having charging problems. My charging problem was that the back battery was only charging at about the same rate as the solar panel, and I think it was actually the solar panel that was charging it, not the actual alternator. Um, it was charging at about 8 to 10 amps an hour, which is way less than it should be charging if it's charging off the front battery with a 40, uh, 40 amp DC to DC. So the 40 amp DC to DC should be charging somewhere between 30 and 40 amps, because obviously the alternator is running other things as well, but 30 to 40 amps per hour should be the charging rate. Just in relation to your regulator, the only issue I had, and it was an issue that I, sh I should have been smart enough to know when it was installed and I watched the guy who installed it it was installed upside down so you could get to the terminals very easily and it was really convenient getting the terminals really easy but this regulator isn't sealed so every time I wash my engine bay the water that would get onto the top of the regulator run into the case of the regulator so this is number two regulator first regulator died because of the water that was in it don't install them so that you've got the convenience of access to the uh, terminals. They need to be installed so the terminals are facing down. As you can see, the electrical system is all in the center of my vehicle. The other side of my water tank and the battery is on the far side beside the fridge. When I do this all again, and I will, that water tank will be over next to the fridge and all the electricals, all the electrics will be here where they're very easy to see and access. It's painful having them in the center where you, you just have no access. So anything goes wrong and you've got to get in there, you've got to squeeze yourself in there after you remove everything that, that's in its way. It would be so much easier if, if it was right up this end of the, the vehicle. So that was definitely a mistake in relation to the electrics. Certainly no reflection on the system, but um, the installation definitely could have been better. You can see the, uh, this is a remote switch. You'll hear the beep. Hear the beep. Well, that beep is the uh, inner, uh, the uh, inverter turning itself off because I, I had it on. I was charging batteries. And there's the beep. Turn it back on. So a remote switch really helps. So you don't have to crawl inside the car to turn the thing on. The next one I get the inverter will be under the fridge, up that end, so that I've got really easy access to the inverter outside the vehicle on that side and I'll still have a remote switch over this side. A little inconvenient not having a remote switch for the inverter though on the, in the cab. So at night time when I'm using the computer and it's starting to run out of batteries and I need to plug it in, I need to be able to turn the inverter on. I won't have that access inside the cab. So back of the canopy, I've been camping now for about a month. We've done Mariala, Hellhole Gorge. Now we're at Tiwa Beach. Tiwa Beach. After here we go back to Mitchell for a bit of a family reunion and then we're finished and uh, we're home Monday so until Monday it's been used for a month non-stop apart from a few days but pretty much a month non-stop and it's a little disheveled that said I'm quite happy with it like this um, this is my power side of things I've got um, the as, as, you, as we talked about, it comes through to the DC to DC and battery. That's in the middle of the camper there in the center. Um, 
It's also got the AC, so if you're at home and you want to give it a quick old boost before you go away, you can charge through the AC, that charges about 40 amps an hour. 2000 watt inverter, 2000 watt inverter comes with two outlets and a USB. The whole system is expensive, it really is expensive and I'll do my best to find you a price. If I can find a price, I'll Google it now. If I can find a price, I'll post what that setup costs. Um, my guess it would be north of $6,000. So it's, it's quite an expensive rig uh, setup. But from an electrical standpoint, I've had it now 12 months. Hasn't missed a beat. It is just freaking awesome. I, everything I want charged, and I charge my batteries for the drone, my um, Canon batteries for the camera, all my um, GoPros, all the headlights, the head torches, the computer, it runs a toaster, electric kettle, and an oven, a 12 volt oven. So during the course of a day, pretty much all of that gets used, and I go for a drive the next day, and when I get back, it's 100%. And that's exactly what happened today. Today, I got up this morning and it was on 76%, and all of the things that I just mentioned, I used yesterday, took it down to 76%, morning got up we went to rainbow and back I'm at 99% so that's the electrical system full inner drive regulator DC to DC uh, 40 amp DC to DC a 200 amp lithium battery the AC 2000 watt inverter a 200 watt um, solar panel and it runs everything there'll be many of you out there saying you can get that same system for lots less than that and you can absolutely can get this way cheaper using different brands uh, different batteries that said I had the funds for this one I knew it would be hassle free I'm doing a lot of camping a lot of traveling a lot of overlanding on a lot of bumpy roads and I just wanted something that I'm gonna feel confident with and I do feel confident with this if there's any questions at all in relation to the electrical system, by all means hit, it, hit me up in the comments and I'll, I'll definitely answer you if I can. And if I can't, I'll do a bit of research and get back to you um, in that respect. So any questions at all, hit me up in the comments. Any suggestions in relation to what I could do better? I know there's a Red Arc system out there that's sensational, but it's just a little bit, it's a little bit too rich for me. It's dearer, I think, than the Anodrive system. But, uh, if it isn't let me know in the comments so that's it thank you very much for watching hit the like button if you got anything out of this video and subscribe if you haven't already catch you on the next video take care